Here we are again at Leviticus chapter 3, verse 8. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's son shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about upon the altar. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat thereof and the whole rump it shall he take off hard by the backbone and the fat that covers the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards. Uh, notes. Uh, this fire does not represent hell as some teach. It represents the judgment of God being poured out upon Christ instead of, a, instead of on us. And it also uh, points to the death that Christ would die. His death totally and completely finished the work of redemption. Verse 10. And the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the cull above the liver, with the kidneys it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. Notes. Now, all of this specifies that God gave his best as it regards the giving of his only son. Verse 12. And if, the, and if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. He shall lay his hand upon the head of it, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. And he shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat that covers the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards. And the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. <clears throat> and the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. All the fat is the Lord's. It shall be a perpetual statute uh, for your generations throughout all your dwellings, that you eat neither fat nor blood. Notes, uh, uh, kind of disgusting there, but as the fat represented the prosperity of Christ given to us, likewise, the blood represented his life freely given for us. The peace offering represented the blessedness and joyousness of, uh, it represented his life freely being given over to us, and the peace offering represented the blessedness and joyousness of uh, communion, basically, between God and man. Uh, like the Passover, the peace offering at once commemorated a historical event and prefigured a blessing to come. Uh, the Passover, for instance, always looked backwards to the deliverance from Egypt, but yet forward to Christ our Passover sacrificed for us. You can read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. It's in there somewhere. And in, and in like manner, the peace offering commemorated uh, the making of the covenant and prefigured the blessed state of communion to be brought about by the sacrifice of the cross. Chapter 4. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not be done, and shall do against any of them, notes, uh, chapter 4, and this basically presents the uh, it's talking about a sin offering uh, Christ became a sin offering on the cross now the words in this verse through ignorance signify that a person irrespective of his knowledge of the word of God cannot really know what sin actually is and this is humbling, disturbing and kind of comforting in certain ways it reveals that the uh, the efficacy of Christ's atoning uh, atonement for sin is not to be measured by man's consciousness of sin, uh, but by God's measurement of it. To believe this fact should fill the heart with a divine peace. For, uh, verse 3 and continuing. If the priest that is anointed uh, do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord uh, for a sin offering. Notes, if it is to be noted, the, the uh, priest, uh, the, the, you know, one of God's big dogs is actually the one who committed the sin. Uh, in the burnt offering, 
the sinlessness of the victim was basically transferred to the worshiper. In the sin offering, the sinfulness of the sinner was transferred to the innocent victim. Verse 4. And he shall bring the bullock under the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before the Lord. Notes. Uh, the sin of ignorance is uh, it is committed uh, basically all the time uh, by preachers and by just you know normal people. Not understanding the cross, uh, millions make other things the object of their faith, which in effect puts them in the position of committing the sin of spiritual adultery. And even though this sin, at least most of the time, is committed in ignorance, it is still sin before God. And it's a, it's a doozy. Verse 5. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. Uh, notes. Uh, this blood was sprinkled on the altar of incense. It was also sprinkled seven times denoting a complete and fulfilling cleansing afforded by Christ. Seven is actually God's number of com uh, completion and perfection. Well, where do you get that from? Well, you have Genesis, you have Exodus, you have Leviticus, and guess what? You've got an entire book of numbers. They're there for a reason. Verse 7. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is the tabernacle of the congregation. Um, hmm. Let me look here. Uh, the blood applied, uh, you know, to the four uh, horns of the altar of incense speaks of the fact that even though forgiveness for believers is available at all times, uh, the horns which speak of dominion testify to us that we, in fact, should have dominion over all sin. But it also testifies to the fact that such dominion cannot come about uh, except by, cross, by, by Christ and what he did at the cross and our faith in that finished work, uh, which is typified by the blood applied to the horns. That's in Romans chapter 6, uh, verse 3 and onward. Scripture. And shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Notes, the effectiveness of the blood applied to the horns of the altar of incense is all based upon the fact that a whole burnt offering has been originally offered to the brazen altar, which means that everything is predicated on that. In the redemption of the transgressor, the priest did everything and the man did nothing. He stood and he looked and he listened and he believed. Uh, like action today is related to Christ on the cross ensures conscious salvation. Verse 8. And he shall take off from it all the fat of, turning the page, the bullock for the sin offering, the fat that covers the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. Verse 10, as it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the burnt offering. Verse 11, and the skin of the bullock and all his flesh with his head and with his legs and his inwards and his dung. Uh, we'll have to pick up at verse, uh, verse 12 of chapter 4, uh, right in the middle of a sentence. Thank you very much.